how how did we get here? Um, we're on hauling today. I actually was rearranging my bookshelves, was not planning on doing an unhaul video, and then I watched covers by Cassie. She posted an unhaul video and I was like, oh, these are actually kind of fun. Maybe I'll film one because I have so many books that I'm unhauling. And I do think it's a good conversation to kind of be having about book buying and book buying habits. So there's two kinds of, I guess, like batches of books. One are books I unhauled, like theoretically unhauled like a year ago and they've just been sitting in my closet. Um, and then two books that I pulled off of my shelves today. So there's a lot. Um, and I want to post this maybe to help you learn from past Katie's mistakes and also for myself to <laughs> to force myself to go through this and then to really help me hone in my book buying in the future. About a year ago now I posted a video that I wanted to go on a book buying ban um, and or like a soft book buying ban where I was still buying some books but I was really like had these rules and was really really trying to think it through. I have done somewhat of an okay job sticking to that. I do think I am really trying to think through more of what I am buying, but I still like to buy books, so I have to figure out what is the balance between buying books because I enjoy them, but making sure I'm not buying books that are just gonna like sit on my shelves and I have no interest in reading. So also keep in mind, all these books that I'm showing have been accumulated over years, and I will say in the past year, I think I've slowed down a lot. Because I just used to feel like I had to like buy everything and I think too now that I'm more of like a digital reader that has also changed my book buying for the better because I kind of prefer to read on my Kindle now so I'm not feeling like I need to buy every single book that I want to read whereas like when I wasn't digital reading that's it's like if I wanted to read a book I felt like I had to buy it so it's been a shift and I also think when you're so when I started reading heavily again in like 2018 so when you're first building a library from scratch you have so much space and now I'm I have a room entirely for my books and it doesn't feel like enough space like the shelves are stacked full so I just need to like evaluate and be like okay like truly like what am I doing here and how can I change it and I've been evaluating the books that I'm buying this year the books that I have ordered for next year and like really trying to think how can I think of strategies to help me uh, kind of make sure that I my ideal vision is I am curating like my collection of like my favorite books like I don't really want to keep a book on a, my shelves that I didn't really like like or didn't feel like the story stayed with me in any kind of way one way I've been doing this with digital books is I'll read a book on Kindle sometimes when you first read it you're like oh my god it was so great but then it has no staying power um so I'll read a book digitally and then if I truly like I'm like no like this is the best thing ever I love it then I will purchase. That being said I am still just a girl and I do just sometimes buy things like I like pretty edges. If a fantasy romance is like super hyped, hyped and I think I'm going to like it I will maybe purchase it without reading it digitally first but it's just a maze and I'm trying to figure out what's the best strategy to still enjoy my hobby of collecting books but also not being overwhelmed by the amount of books I have and then having shelves full of mid books like I want my shelves to be full of my favorite books I think there are ways that I can improve and that is also to like reading something digitally before I purchase it just to make sure that I like it especially now a lot more traditional books are being put on Kindle Unlimited so that can also help um because again like I will buy a book physically and then I like read my Kindle most of the time so like what am I doing you know the, this is kind of what I'm thinking and like obviously I have my favorite authors and I know I'm gonna love whatever they write and I'm gonna want to purchase it like no matter what this is my way to just kind of reset and try and just get rid of the clutter just out of sight out of mind and start fresh really have the books on my shelves that I love and again also trying to make myself start to utilize other resources for book reading. I do use a lot of li library digitally with audiobooks. I don't really use it too much for Kindle but I, I should. Um, and then maybe also like if I do want to read something physically like I should just go to the library but I have enough of physical books here so we'll see. Um, but kind of retraining, <laughs> retraining myself. Um, I also think that I'm you know, back before I was a digital reader and I was reading mostly YA, like I was younger and I think that now 
that I have gotten older, my sh tastes have shifted a lot, as well as um, hand in hand with the market shifting. Because now that there are so many more of these fantasy romance books that are written to an older audience, that's what I'm gravitating towards. Whereas the kinds of stories I was looking for could only really be found in YA, um, and that there wasn't as much of like a digital uh, robustness like there is for Kindle Unlimited. So I don't know. Um, I am aware that I spend my money on books. Don't worry about me. I like I have the, you know. I'm not going into extreme debt over my book buying hobbies like if you are like really struggling with something like that like please seek assistance from like a financial advisor or a therapist um could be a really good resource but don't don't worry about me because I think I've I've called a lot and it, it, I still get overwhelmed by the amount of books that I'm like buying um especially with now other discussion is there's so many special editions now on one hand, like, because everything is special, it makes things less special, so I don't feel the need to buy anything just because it has a special edge, but if I am interested in the story and it has a special edge, it will make me more likely to buy it right away so that it does not go out of print. So, also some things to keep in mind. Um, that being said, let's actually get to the part where you are all here for, which is these gigantic piles of books near me. Um actually don't have my glasses on because the glare is pretty bad with my ring light but I need them on just to show you all of the different piles so I'm gonna manipulate my camera so we have piles over here and piles over here like they were actually kind of hard to like manipulate around so I didn't um so I didn't make like a super large pile. Um, we're just gonna go through them and then if you are interested in anything that I have here I am going to put them up on Pango. We'll see how that goes. If it doesn't move within whatever amount of weeks then I will probably just donate it. Um, there are like local donation bins near me and I might just go to the library. Okay. Also feel free to have an adult beverage if you are of age because this is an occasion that calls for wine because I'm regretting all my <laughs> life choices essentially. But I feel good. I feel like I can do this. I can kind of close that chapter, get rid of the clutter, and then like really, really just start fresh and start with a collection of books that I know are the best. And hopefully the unread percentage <laughs> will go down. So unread, yeah, unread percentage will go down. And glasses off again so we don't have the glare. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's just start picking from piles. This first book actually is one of my favorites, um, but I had two copies because I bought it independently and then I was also sent to copy, so I'm just gonna sell my extra, but um, I know this is an unhaul video, but if you're really interested in this series, it's so good. It's witches, past lives, tension yearning, like, please pick it up. Um, but yeah, I just have an extra, so bye-bye. I think I have the rest of the series on here but the bargainer series by laura thalassa um same author as bewitch which is one of my favorites but this is a book again i read i feel like it's one of the earlier fantasy romances but i've since seen some commentary um ally enchanted who she more so is on book talk now than book two but she was talking about how like the age gap in this is like kind of questionable and it's like not really a dark romance where i'm putting my morals aside um and I like thought about it and then again like I also just feel like this series doesn't have a super lot of staying power with me where like I'm thinking about it years later so she's going. I will also say some of these books I have been sent unsolicited. You know when they were sent to me I did do a social media post to say that blah 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 this book and promote it but um you know especially when it's unsolicited after a certain point I don't feel the need to like hold on to it just because somebody sent it to me especially when I did not ask for it um so sorry <laughs> and I I mean I can clarify if I was sent something or or not but anyways these were two books that I was sent and this is Coach by Devney Perry and Tattered by Devney Perry. Devney Perry um I have not really gotten into her yet and she is somebody that I think if I were to get into her books I probably would read them digitally because she at, is I think almost everything is on Kindle Unlimited so that's where I think I would prefer to read her 
Um, and then I, I just don't really feel compelled to hold on to these copies. So bye. -bye. Oh my god, I'm being like so harsh, but I gotta do what you gotta do. Buy a Thread by Lucy Score. This one I actually think instead of selling, I'm gonna give it to my cousin that really likes Lucy Score. So win win. Again, these aren't Kindle Limited if I want to read them, but I know people that really like Lucy Score that would appreciate these books. Um, oh, like I mentioned, most of these are gonna be on Pango, but I do have some people that I might just give them to. So if I have someone in mind, I'll tell you. If not, and I think of it later, well, then you won't find it on my Pango. The Fine Print and Terms and Condition by Lauren Asher. Um, these are the indie editions, and I don't know, these might actually fetch a fair price because this series is very popular and these are the older indie editions. I'm just gonna sell them. I liked them, but I don't think I liked them enough to be like, yes, this is part of my collection, and sometimes that's all that these choices are coming down to. Aha, here we are. The other Bargainer series, um, and again, I was sent this in a pure package, and I'm sorry. <sighs> the Hurricane Wars, um, I have not read this yet, uh, but I accidentally bought two copies. Why am I like this? I don't know. Um, so I'm just selling my extra copy. Throne of the Fallen, one of my favorite books. This is an extra Barnes & Noble copy because I was doing a really bad job of keeping track of my pre-orders. I think I actually have a vlog where, um, for the second book in the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy, I ha four, four separate copies of Kingdom of the whatever arrived to my house because I just was not checking out my pre-orders. So you know, I had a problem <laughs> and we're trying to resolve it. Anyways, this is just gonna be sold because it's extra. And The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. Um, I, this is an author that I am interested in reading more from and I have her for the Wolf series on my shelf and I think I'm going to like that. So that's not one that I'm gonna like unhaul. Like it's one that I own, but I'm still interested in reading. I would be interested in reading this one eventually, but the reason that I'm gonna unhaul this is because it's the Barnes & Noble edition and then Barnes & Noble didn't do a matching edition for the second book and I realized I think I like the regular edition more because it has like pink in it or whatever so if I like Hannah Witten when I read her other series I think I will just instead pick up the regular editions and that could be a repurchase later so for now this one's getting sold Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray this is sad because it is signed um however I this series has suffered from so many cover changes like you couldn't get all of them in like the same cover same format paperback versus hardcover i really liked this series i read it on audiobook but again it's not one that i love so much that i feel compelled to keep on my shelves and especially like i have like the what is this the third or the fourth one yeah like the randomly the third one but none of the other series um i just bye bye if your name is katie um and you specifically want this book because it is signed to katie let me know. I'd, I'd be down to give it to a fellow Katie. Okay. Um, the Atlas Six and the Atlas Paradox. This is the Barnes & Noble edition. I liked the Atlas Six when I read it, but I just have no desire to continue, so I don't know really how much I actually liked it. <laughs> you know, like, I read it and I was like, okay, that's good, but, like, I just, I bought this book and I have had zero desire to continue. So I think it's time to go bye bye again if I'm ever interested in the series in the future. I am going to try to get things from my library. Okay. This one's kind of sad, um, but I do think I can get a decent amount of money for these, which is part of my reason for selling them but these are the indie editions of Guild and Glint. Um, back when this series was just indie I was going to collect these editions in particular because they are very pretty um, and then uh, basically and then the series got picked up so then the other like the ending books in the series weren't going to have an exact matching edition and then the new they do have these hardcover editions available with the trad pub book but they are like the ugliest sprayed yellow edge. I know you were trying to be gold, but it looks mustard and I hate it. And I'm like, well, okay. So I decided for this series to collect the paperbacks. Um, I will say I was a little bit bad. I have a feeling I'm going to like this series a lot. So I bought all of the paperbacks because they have the like melting gold spine and I really didn't want those to go out of print. And I started to see them, um, run out at my local target. So I was bad, but I did buy them in the <laughs> target sale. Uh, so I really hope I like them. Um, and if not, I guess I have a first edition of something like a special edition of something to sell later on so that is also another key point like if I do buy a special edition and then I end up not liking it like it does have a little bit more resale value than a regular book but whatever okay 
A Soul of Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armitrug. This is the Barnes & Noble cover. I decided, I, one thing I also, when I went on my book buying ban was that I, like, am really trying not to buy multiple editions of books, um, especially if, like, the editions are kind of similar or whatever. But with the From Blood and Ash covers, like, this one's pretty, but I just kind of like the regular standard covers. All of the series was out in this particular cover. I think they've since gone back and they like reprinted them, but I like the original covers better. I don't need two copies of the series. I have my copies that I love and I've annotated and uh, like I just, I, don't, I just don't need to. Same story for A Light in the Flame. Next we have Fall of Ruin and Wrath by Jennifer L. Armitrout. So I am a Jennifer L. Armitrout stan and I'm very interested in this book. However, I bought the Barnes & Noble exclusive just because it was exclusive. I like the regular blue cover better. So I was like, why did I buy this if I like the standard cover better? So I just decided to um, get rid of this one and I, I purchased the blue cover instead. And that's the additions that I'm going to stick with. Violet Made of Thorns. I have it in the Barnes & Noble edition and the regular edition. I started reading this book and then just like kind of lost interest and apparently it ends on a cliffhanger and there is not going to be a second book which is very um sad for the author <laughs> but um for me for my collection I'm like well I, like if it's just gonna be an unresolved standalone I really don't want to read it um and like this is what I'm saying like I used to buy everything I was remotely interested in in like multiple copies. I have never read from this author I didn't know if I was gonna like this author I just bought it. Like, what was she doing? I don't know. That's why we're here to judge my past mistakes and also to start fresh. And um, since I'm judging myself, it's time for another sip of wine. This is another one. I have the other cup. Here we go. I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuinston. I have the Barnes Noble and a regular edition. And I like Casey McQuinston. I really liked Red, White, and Royal Blue. Um, and I still have one last stop that I haven't read yet, but I am not on hauling because I am interested in it. But this one is YA. I find if I'm going to pick up a YA contemporary, I'm going to listen to the audiobook. So I don't ever see myself reading these physically. Not saying that I'm never going to read this in general, um, but I just don't think physically is like the format that I'm going to want for it. And a lot of times when I read an audiobook and I like it and I enjoy it, like I don't unless it was like the best thing ever, I don't normally feel compelled to pick up the physical book after. So I think I'm just gonna part ways with these. Oh, and then here we go. The regular version of the Alice Paradox, just like I was saying. Like, I mean, I guess in this case, like I had read the first one, um, but like, I was just buying editions willy nilly. Like, what is she doing? Okay. This next one's kind of sad because like I enjoyed kind of this first book, The Princess Will Save You. It's supposed to be like a gender bent, Princess Bride, um, but I think the selling point of Princess Bride is that there's a lot of humor and this had none of the humor. Um, so it was just kind of slow and like it was fine, but like I've owned this second book and I have not picked it up in years. I think, again, this is just me growing out of YA and I am about to be in my 30s, so I think it, it's okay. Uh, when the Wheel of Time show came out, I'm like, I'm gonna be a high fantasy girly and I bought two Robert Jordan Wheel of Time books. Sometimes it's okay to not be a high fantasy girly. I like it occasionally, um, but I just don't ever see myself getting to this. Or again, like if I really am compelled to, I would probably watch the show first and then maybe I would go pick it up at my local library. But I just need to let go of the types of readers that I like think I want to be and just be the kind of reader that I am, which is a very smart reader. <laughs> I like other things too, but you know, just, just embrace it. Um, so yeah, no interest. The one author in, of high fantasy that I'm interested in reading is Brandon Sanderson, and beyond that, I, there's not too much in the, the genre that really is calling my name. Um, okay, I think I have the other books in this series, um, the Fable series, which is so gorgeous, but again, like, this one's The Last Legacy. Like, it was fine. It was a good pirate book, but like, it just, there was nothing in it that I feel super attached to, so bye-bye. Touch of Darkness, <sighs> I might I might hold on to this one just to see because I am getting rid of so much. Um, I think I might like this series, maybe I'll hold on to this first one just so I have it if I want to read it physically, but this um, I feel like is a series that is on Kindle Unlimited and I would probably just enjoy better on Kindle, but like um, I'll, I'll just hold on to this just in case. Um, but yeah, it's like modern, urban, Hades and Persephone. Legends and Lattes, I think I was sent, again like... <sighs> For some reason, I'm not super interested in it. 
it is what it is. <laughs> um, somehow I have a third copy of Bewitched. So I have two copies. I, I don't know. Oh, I, okay. I think this one was I bought the book and then I got sent it two separate times. I don't know how that happened, but it wasn't me buying three copies. So um, I'll have another one of that to sell. Some of these are sad because like I did enjoy the books, but I feel like my taste has just evolved past it and then I'm not really interested in going back. So it's like if I'm never going to read the second book, like why am I holding on to the first? Like I didn't like it so much or it didn't have so much emotional weight with me that I'm actually going back to read the second. Um, and for that, that is These Violent Delights and Our Violent Ends by Chloe Gong. Like I liked the first one fine enough. It was good. Like I even annotated it. Um, but I just don't ever see myself going back to read the series because my tastes have changed and it's okay to let go. Okay, like, just like telling myself it's okay to let go. <sighs> Need that. Okay. This was a series I really liked when I read it. There will come a darkness, and as the shadow rises by Katie Rosepool. Never read the second one. Never read the third one. Like it is just time to say goodbye. Sometimes a book can serve you well in the moment, but it's not part of your forever collection. Um, the Third Daughter by Adrienne Tooley. I liked one of this author's other books, but again, I think I've just kind of moved past YA, and I have no interest in picking this up. Um, you know, I think I'm gonna keep Lake's Edge. I actually really liked, this was like a gothic YA, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I never picked up the sequel. <sighs> maybe, I'll, uh, maybe I'll just hold on. Maybe I'll put this in like a maybe pile and we'll see. Because there are a few now that I'm going through, I'm like, eh, I don't know. Okay. Again, this is just a case of my, a lot of these are YA books, and I think it's just genuinely because my taste has evolved past it, and it's just not the genre for me anymore, which is sad, but that's life, and I, I'm just not gonna buy them in the future. Okay. Um, next one, Song of Silver Flame Like Night by Emily Wen Zhao. <sighs> again, I thought I was really gonna like this. I just never picked it up. This is one maybe, again, like YA, I tend to be reaching for more on audio. Like I could read this one on audio, but it's just not on my mind. Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. I really liked um, Six Crimson Cranes by her, but I have no interest in picking up the series. So I don't know. Um, I randomly bought Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin because I've heard it's really good. And um, it's like a dark pirate romance. But again, like this is one that I would probably just read on my Kindle. Like I didn't need the physical copy and I don't know why I bought it. Um, if I ever read it, it will be on my Kindle. Um, this this one is signed to me. Um, I, I don't know why. I, I think I might want to keep that one. Okay. House of Marion. I was sent this unprompted. Like, it looks good, but again, I just think it's too young for me. Um, again, with Sarah by S.J. Jones. This one is an ARC, so I'm just going to put it in a little free library because do not sell ARCs. That is frowned upon. It's supposed to be, like, really cute. Again, like, if I'm interested in the series, I could see myself picking it up on audio and not necessarily wanting to own the physical books. But, again, I've heard this is also, like, on the younger, younger side of YA, and that's just not something I typically reach for a super lot. Um, this one is a, something I... It was an impulse buy, and I regret it because it was an impulse buy. Okay. I bought this, Trial of the Sun Queen, because it had um, a cover by Monolime Art, and it's Midnight Whispers box. It is gorgeous. It is so pretty, and I actually, but I haven't read the book yet. I have the book in the regular edition, but I just, like, couldn't commit to, okay, I bought this, now I have to buy all the four other books in the series without even knowing if I liked the first one. Um, so, and this one hopefully could... You know, I'm not going to try and, like, scam people or, like, scalp people out of, like, a lot of money like some of these resellers are, but I could at least make my money back on what I paid for it. Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kemmerer. This is a book that I liked at the time. So they changed the cover for these books, and I... so I can't even get a matching cover. So I just have no motivation to continue collecting it. Again, I did like the series, like, enough, and here's the thing, like, I can just like a series, and, like, it's not my favorite thing, but I still want to read it, like... Not every book is going to be your absolute favorite book, right? Like, your favorites are a favorite because they stand above the rest. But you still have the rest that you're, like, reading. So, like, I can just enjoy a book for what it is in the moment but not need to own it. And that's something. Something I'm trying to get a handle on. Okay. I did it again where I ended up with multiple copies. I really liked Powerless. 
I am going to continue the series. Um, I just have two copies because I suck. The Bridge Kingdom by Daniel L. Jensen. I actually really, really love that series, but they're coming out with new trad covers in paperback, and I like them a lot more than this cover. So, um, again, I never... I got read the first, like, duology, and I never continued, um, but I, in general, really like Daniel L. Jensen's books. I liked her Viking book um, as well, and I just, I just like the new covers better, so... The buy old cover, I don't need to hang hang on to it. Stars and Smoke by Marie Lu. This sounds really cool. It's like a YA spy novel, but again, YA mostly I'm reading on audio. I think I have this book on hold anyways. Like again, it's not something I'm going to read physically or that I feel like is going to be such a favorite. I'm gonna want to hold on to it. And you know what? If it is, I can use all the money I make from selling all these books and buy it again. Um, these books I think I was sent like a long time ago. Um, they're indie books and these are A Cursed Kiss and A Cursed Heart by Jenny Hickman. Again, um, I would probably just read these on Kindle if I am so inclined and it would probably be fine enough. Um, this book I actually found in my like little free library in one of the apartment buildings I used to live in. I was like, mm, a fantasy romance girly is getting rid of some books because there were some other ones. Um, I read Radiance by Grace Draven. And it was okay, so like I don't super know if I'm gonna really like this, but again, it, I can pick it up again along the way if I end up reading it and it ends up becoming like a favorite favorite. Um, okay, so I did get the Fairy Loot Romanticy subscription, um, and I ended up canceling it because I was like, what am I really doing with this? You know, most of the time, it wasn't books that I was super interested in and like I you know I think like occasionally they probably will have one that's like amazing but again it's like more clutter do I need more clutter like I it's fine I don't I you know I can't have everything in life as much as I want it um I would love an unlimited library but you know what this mental exercise is making me be more picky um and it's not a bad idea. Okay, this one, gorgeous. Um, it's called A Curse of Blood and Wolves by Melissa something. Um, I got this and I was like, wow, so pretty. I have had zero desire to read it. So like, why hold on to it? I don't know. It's not even one. Like, I, I'm keeping majority of the ones from Fairy Loot that I got for the few months I had it. But again, this is one also after everyone got their box. Nobody was coming um, out with rave reviews being like, yes, I love this. So make it that what you will. Um, okay, next, again, is a series that I think was really good in the moment, and I enjoyed it, but I just, I just don't feel any need to hold on to it anymore, and hopefully I can sell it to somebody that will get more out of it. And that is Crier's War and Iron Heart by Nina Varela. Also, um, one thing I will say, like, if you annotate a book, people will still buy it on Pango, which is pretty cool, um, but I also think that I in general I'm kind of starting to not annotate as much unless I know it's like my favorite author ever or um what because I just feel bad and I'm like writing in these books that I like I'm gonna turn around and sell um there is a market for it though people will buy books that you have written in um some people actually really like to read others annotations but I I don't know unless I like know it's a book that like is life-changing do I really need to annotate it no no, sometimes it's it's more effort. I can't believe I'm coming to a point where I'm like, eh, I kind of feel eh about annotating. <laughs> um, there are some books that like I love my annotations in and like my all-time favorites, but like to just pick up a book not knowing what you're getting into and then being like, yes, I'm going to annotate this. Mm -hmm. And again, also like if I read it digitally, I can like digitally annotate it. That's like not actually physically doing something in the book. Eh. I can't believe I'm going to a point where I'm like almost over it. Remember when I was going to like post my guide to annotating and I just like never did for like five years. Um, so yeah. All right. Uh, when, when Night Breaks by, by Janella Angeles. I feel like I didn't buy this. I was given it by somebody I think that was getting rid of it. I read the first book and I like liked it fine enough. But I just am never, I just am, it's like sad because... I mean, like, this book was fine for what it is. I'm just, I'm not really into YA anymore. And it's very apparent from this video, and it's kind of sad. But, you know, end of an era, I guess. Speaking in that same vein, we have the Curse of Dark and Lonely series by Bridget Kimmerer. Again, like, I even annotated this one. Like, I liked it for what it was at the time, but I just have outgrown the, 
the series. That's the unfortunate reality sometimes. Courting Darkness by Robin Lefevre. This is like a spin-off series. I don't even know where the original one is, okay? The original series. So I can't, I don't even know. So The Night Hunt by Alexander Christo. I almost regret, oh, and I actually have a print that goes with it. So whoever purchases it will have that. Again, this is one I annotated. Like, I didn't need to annotate it. I didn't even know if I was going to like it. This one was like a monstrous girl fantasy and I actually um didn't really like it that like it was fine it was fine like it was fine it just didn't have that it factor um the cover though absolutely stunning I almost want to keep it just for the cover but like I did not care for the contents that much um again this one I think is just going to be too young for me um not saying that you can be old and not enjoy young books but like unless they're really special mm, eh. um and this is Twin Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber again maybe I'll read it on audiobook it's then that can just be what the experience is. Um, uh, this one's kind of hard. Like, this one is... I might be on the fence about this one. I'm going to put this in the in my on-the-fence pile, because I did like that one. Um, Beyond the Ruby Veil vale by Mara Fitzgerald. Um, this was Maddie's. Maddie from um, Paperback Princess, aka now Madison Fox. This is one of her favorite books one year, so she I think she got it for me. I have never picked it up. Sorry, Maddie. Um, but... I've just had no interest. Uh, again, okay, this one was actually really cute and really sweet. Um, sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. I don't ever see myself rereading it though. Um, and, it, and it didn't grip me like enough to keep it. Jade Fire Gold by June C.L. Tan. This was like Avatar The Last Airbender inspired and like it was good. It was good for what it was, but again, it, the story didn't like have staying power with me. Um, okay, this is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of a magic steeped in poison and again this is just something that I feel like if I were to like read it um I would just pick up the audiobook because that's kind of where I'm sitting with my books at the moment but again I've had it on my shelves for a couple years now and I have not read it I think that's kind of like if I've had it on my shelves for a couple years and I haven't reached for it like maybe I should just reevaluate whether or not I really wanted it and just try and have less unread books on my shelves okay on to another pile there are so many piles I'm a little bit stressed out but it's fine Vicious Spirits by Cat Joe. I think I have the first. Okay, we yeah, have Wicked Fox by Cat Joe. I When I read this book, I liked it. It's very, like, K-drama um, inspired, but I never picked up the sequel. Like, I, you know, just, just, just my interest has kind of winged. Um, Flip the Script by Lila Lee. This one, again, is, like, a K-pop in, or K-drama inspired one. Um, and I read one of her books, I have like some cute little goodies, so if someone wants to buy this from my Tango, like you can get the pre-order um, art print and stuff. So again, this is a book I think I would like on audio. Um, like I like some K-pop inspired books, and I liked her other one a lot too. Um, but again, like I just don't see myself reading it physically, so I need to keep it physically. Same thing with Once Upon a K-Prom by Cat Cho, something I probably would read audio-wise, but I'm never going to read the physical book, so why am I keeping it? Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. This one I could be on the fence with, which is Crave by Tracy Wolf. I don't, like, I've heard this is kind of like a trashy Twilight-esque series. Again, this could be one that maybe I'll just keep the first book, and then even if I like, if I'm, like, intrigued by it, maybe I would just continue the series, like, another way without purchasing, but, eh, I'll just put it in, like, a maybe pile. And then all these, like, maybes are not gonna go back on my shelves. They're just gonna go, like, somewhere, kind of, like, tucked away in a corner. And we'll see how I feel about them after, like, a while. Okay, next. The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. I think I took this from somebody that was getting rid of it, and I just did not had any interest in it. Um, this was a book I was sent completely unsolicited. I, um, yeah, I used to be on the mailing list for a lot of these, like, PR companies, and they, I would just get so much, like, and I don't want to sound, like, ungrateful because I'm so happy that somebody took time out of their day to send me, like, a PR package, but I've tried to really remove myself from a lot of those mailings unless, um... It's something I know I'm going to like want or I specifically request because I do just end up not keeping the books because they're not something I'm super interested in. So um, yeah, this was like a sequel that I was sent and I just, I have no interest. Um, and this one's kind of sad. Um, the Children of Blood and Bone series and the sequel, like I read this book, liked it when I read it, um, and I've just had no interest in the second or the third book. Um, it was kind of like a really long time in between books, which like not going to you know, knock the author for taking their time writing, but I just have lost a lot of interest in it, again, as I move away from YA in general. Um, and I've 
heard not great reviews for the other parts of the series so that makes me sad but you know for what it was at the time I enjoyed it um, again, one that I like, liked it for what it was at the time, and that's Fable, Namesake, Pirate, YA, I mean like this. Oh no, wait, how do I do it? I forget. How do you put the covers together? Oh, this way? I mean, gorgeous, but... Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. A book I liked in the moment. Eh, feel eh about it now. Same with Wild as the Witch. Like, again, it's just me outgrowing YA. Actually, I have another book of hers on my shelves. I'm going to take it down. Dang, this, this is so rough. Okay, um, bring me here midnight. Like, again, like, it was fine. I mean, it's really pretty, but just these, these, I just, I don't know. I just don't ever feel like I want it on my shelves forever. Um, uh, okay, so Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. Again, it's a YA book. The first one was fine, um, but in all the time that I've owned them, I've never picked up Lady Smoke or Ember Queen. So again, if it's something that I'm interested in in the future, I can pick it up through my library. This is a book I'm on the fence about. I think I'm going to put this in my maybe pile um, because I really liked Catherine Purdy's book, The Bone Crier's Moon. Like, it was one of my favorite books of the year when I read it. I never read the sequel, but I'm going to hold on to that one because I loved the first one so much. So again, I think this is going to go in my maybe pile because um, I'm not totally ready to get rid of it yet but I think there's a sequel on it they didn't keep this cover so if I pick it up and like I wanted both books I'd want them to match um I need my books to match okay I don't want them to mismatch so I'll just whatever if I really care about it that much I'll get back to it eventually okay The Born Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller I think this one I might have been sent or I might have picked up um I just sometimes buy books thinking that I'm a different type of reader than I am and like this one seems like cool but I'm never reaching for these kinds of like lit fic fantasy books so bye bye um blood air by emily wen zhao again just that era of my life has kind of passed um i really am rarely reaching for a YA, ya book unless it's like something like a favorite author or something i really really think that i'm gonna enjoy um but yeah it's kind of past me now uh, Bridge Kingdom and Trader Queen by Daniel L. Jensen. I'm, I don't know if I want to like transfer my annotations over. Like I said, I'm kind of like tired of annotating in general. Um, you know, sometimes I do, I, you know what, it's just not necessary. It's fun, but sometimes <laughs> it's just quicker just to read the book. Um, again, I like the new covers better, so goodbye to these. I don't need to hold on to them. Um, okay. The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. I really thought I was going to like this book more than I did. Like, I kind of like, like, fantasy comedy and that's kind of what this is pitched as but mm, I don't know I also just like I'm afraid of like death and dying and this deal with like a girl that worked in a funeral parlor and it just I, I don't know I'm just not that comfortable with that part of life so um I don't know uh this is tough this is the monstrous comics and I really like they are so beautiful but I like read a few and then never continued on. Maybe I'll just keep the first volume. I don't know. Like this is again something I feel like I could get these from my library and read them on my Kindle. And the digital experience would be more than enough. Like I'm not super attached to this comic. Um, so yeah, they might just be sold. They are so pretty so it's hard. Okay, I pulled some of these out. This is the V.E. Schwab Villain's Origin Story comic. I might just hold on to this because I do have a V.E. Schwab collection and I um, do like her stuff. Even if these aren't my favorite, I still kind of, eh, I'll keep them in the collection. Um, same thing, I think I just pulled all the graphic novels out. Um, this is a Saba Tahir graphic novel. I do think if I get back to the Ember in the Ashes series, like I would eventually pick this up. So we'll put this back into the keep pile. Um, I can't remember. I think I might have already... Uh, no, I don't have a third copy that I... Ugh, I suck. Um, okay, this was a book I was sent. Eh, I'm just not gonna read it. Uh, All of Us Villains by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. Like, I think it would be good, but this is The Ark, and uh, my friend Keely actually really, really loves this book, so I'm going to give her my Ark copy. Um... She Who Became the Sun, I have no idea where I even got this wrapped cover. It was like a book box that I think I was sent and then 
they sent you like a special cover on top of the regular cover so it's still just like the regular book again i just thought that i was gonna be as i continue on my life my like adult high fantasy era again like this is a book that i do i could see myself picking up in the future but i'm just not reaching for this type of fantasy so again if i do want to read it i have friends that own it that i could borrow or i could go to the library um song of achilles i have a collector's edition that i would maybe read from again um eh, i don't know I, this is gonna go back in the baby pile because i'm not i don't think i'm totally ready to give that one up yet this is something i an arc i got at ala um the makeup test by jenny l howe again i've just never reached for it <laughs> this book house of leaves is like supposed to be a really scary horror book told in like multimedia format like some of the pages have like like it's like I don't know who she thought she was when she bought this book, but I'm never going to read it, to be honest with you. Again, this was when I was like, maybe my lit fic era. Cloud Cuckoo Land is like three different... I just, I just don't think I'm that kind of reader, and I think I should just stop fooling myself. Um, it's okay to be a girly that just wants to read girly pop books. It's it's okay. You don't have to read, uh, you know, high intellectual brainy brainiac stuff to be a reader. And I, I often, I don't want to experience this online, but I often experience this, like, in my job because I am, um, I do work in a scientific field, which usually requires, like, a lot of education. So people are kind of judgy sometimes. Um, and when I'm like, yeah, I read, and they're like, oh, have you read this blah, 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 highbrow, sci-fi, whatever. I'm just, like, unabashedly, like, no. I read romance. Um, I do enough intellectual things at work all day. And when I go home, I'm not trying to prove I'm smart in another way. I'm just trying to read about people falling in love and fun little adventures. So I have nothing to prove. Anyways, um, The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. Cute. This one's so pretty. Um, and Keely got it for me. Sorry, Keely. But again, I'm just no longer in my YA era. So, um, uh, this one is tricky. This one's tricky because I did really like this series and I thought it was good. This might go in the mini pile. I've had them unshelved for a while, but I don't know if I'm truly ready to like fully get rid of it. But like, ugh, like it explores some interesting philosophical topics. Um, but ugh, I don't know. I don't know. This, uh, I don't know. Um, okay. This, I bought like these three books when I thought I was going to be in my poetry era and I never opened a single one. I mean, like, this one's pretty, but, like, maybe I should have opened one of the books first to see if I even liked poetry before buying three poetry books. Actually, you know what? My sister really likes poetry. Um, for my, um, wedding, she actually wrote me a poem, um, for her speech. So, you know what? I think I'm gonna gift these to her because I think she would be someone that would get more out of them. So, I'm gonna put that in a pile for her. Um, oh, and then here's just the third psych book, which I never read. I read the other two, though. Um, okay, this is a manga, and I just don't really read manga, I'm sorry. Um, okay, here is the, um, Robert Jordan book, Wheel of Time. I honestly might just watch. I think I tried starting to read it, and I was like, no. Um, you know what? Sometimes you can watch an adaptation, and you don't have to read the source material. Crazy, I know. That's kind of how I feel about Dune, where I wasn't watching the movie, because I'm like, I need to read the books. I actually have no interest in reading those books. Um, maybe I should just, instead of spending hours and hours reading a gigantic long series, just enjoy the movies for what they are. And that's kind of how I'm feeling about this um, series. If I like the show, I like the show. I don't need to read the books. Um, okay. Death the Education by Naomi Novik. I mean, it seemed cool, but I'm just not, not really that interested. Um, okay. Verity by Colleen Hoover. Um, I was gonna stick it out because people say this is like, oh, I didn't even, uh, apparently I started reading this book. Um, this is like her one thriller that people say is good. If I were to read it, I would, I like thrillers on audio. Probably listen to it on audio. And I also don't really like Colleen Hoover in general. So I don't need to keep that. And Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf. This was, I picked up randomly when I was like looking for more fantasy romance-esque books before it really became what it was now. And it's like fantasy romance, but YA. And like, I don't know. I just haven't really heard of it too much. And I'm just, I don't know. It's whatever. Um, The Royals Next Door by Karina Halley. I don't remember where I got this or why. I'm uh, just not that interested. Um, okay, this book. I got Gone with the Wind 
by Margaret Mitchell because my grandma said this was like her favorite book ever. Um, but I do know there is like I don't I don't know um, if it holds up to the test of time. Uh, like I, I just genuinely don't know. And um, I also it is gigantically long. I have no interest. I can watch the movie if I am so inclined. Uh, okay, this book. Keely got like me and Keely were like we're gonna do buddy read. And we bought the book for each other. Like, I bought her a copy and she bought me a copy. We ended up hating this book. When I tell you this was my worst book of the year, this was my worst book of the year. And I genuinely was really, really enjoying it. I annotated it. This is why I need to, like, wait before I start annotating things. Um, I was annotating it. Like, I was having so much fun. Like, she's on an archaeological adventure. She's a badass. What this man did in terms of sabotaging her career was not, like, oopsie, like, I can grovel a little bit and you are forgiven. Like, that, it was just crossed so many lines for me especially as somebody working in a male-dominated field that i was like i genuinely am not comfortable with this and i hate this book forever so bye bye um that was been in the closet for a while <laughs> okay um red white and royal blue by case mcquiston again i liked it um but like i didn't like it to the i need every edition need a special edition kind of level so um i don't think they sell that anymore so i might get some money for that um same thing like i never continued the chloe gong books oh a second volume of that snow white one um i never continued past these violet delights so why would i even read foul lady fortune i don't know um this one says it's exclusive i think oh this is the waterstones edition so again these might they're both exclusive editions because i bought multiple copies of the book that i was not even caught up on the series for so like again why do i do this um bye bye okay this one is, I accidentally got two, um, of A Curse for True Love. What the hell is in here? Well, thank God I opened this before I sold it. This is, um, where my Coral Prince page overlays are, which, um, I actually definitely want to keep. Why are they not in the Coral Prince? That's really strange. I don't know why. Oh, you know why? Because I got these actually mailed to my mom's house and I mailed them back in like a media mail thing so they had to go in a secure book okay so curse of true love um my mom got me a bunch of waterstones editions books for christmas last year and I think like but I had placed the order and I accidentally um placed I just had two in the quantity um by accident so I have an extra one and again it is an exclusive so I, it could fetch a fair penny um okay is that it that might be it I think we have one more um and this last one is Bear in the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Again, I was like, I'm a high fantasy, cerebral, fantasy girly, and I read these mature books. Um, okay, I was bored. Sorry. Um, I know it's theoretically good, and like I could tell it was high quality writing, but I was bored and not interested. So I, I tried it. I, I read it in a snowstorm. I was like, I am setting the mood no 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 okay so that's that um it was a lot thank you for watching i find these videos very fun and i haven't <laughs> normally done them because i do sometimes feel bad talking negatively about books but i do think it is important to show that um it's okay to want to start fresh and it's okay to let go and it's okay to regret your purchasing and your spending habits of the past and reform anyways um, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. You grow and you learn. I also, um, my pandemic, I do think a lot of <laughs> this book buying was also spurred on by the, um, soul-crushing anxiety of the pandemic because, I mean, it was just a wild time, right? Um, and that's when I also really got into K-pop collecting, which is as much of a money suck you think buying books is that is a whole other level. And I, since I've stopped buying, like, K-pop, I really have not Bought, bought like anything um so which is why I feel confident that I can turn my book buying habits around and find this balance between yes being a book collector collecting like, curating my collection of my favorite books and also just being a reader and just reading books but not every book is one that I'm gonna love enough to want to buy and how do you find that balance I don't know I'm in the process of learning it as I go over the years and here is where I have landed. Um, but again, like, I feel like I'm going to feel pretty good when I sell these things and I can use that money for 
other books that I want to buy even though I'm trying to buy less. Um, I could use it for, I don't know, like just to give myself a little boosty for some of my bills. Uh, you know, just so that I, I just have a little bit extra money I can treat myself. Um, or I could put in savings and be financially responsible. So, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna turn around. Am I gonna make back everything that I spent on this? No, but it's something. Um, and if this book can give somebody else joy, then it will have been more. So with that, um, let me know if you guys have done a big unhaul like this before and just any of your general thoughts. Um, Let's do like a little, do they have an eraser emoji? Do like an eraser because we're erasing these book purchases from my library. Um, and yeah, I just love to hear from you guys in the comments. So have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.